Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over the water to Denmark once again and we've got a collaboration beer from one of my favourite breweries that I've discovered since I moved over here to Sweden. So we're going to go to Omegar Broikus once again and tonight we're having a taste of the Shadow Pictures of a Journey which is a collaboration beer with Hill Farmstead Brewery. This one is one of the grassroots brewing range and it's a double IPA and as you know if you've watched my reviews on Omegar before they produce some damn awesome IPA so to try a double IPA from these guys is pretty exciting and if you also put on top of that the fact that Hill Farmstead Brewing have been rated the world's best brewery by Rate Beer of 2015 then you get some idea of how good a beer this is going to be very much looking forward to this one and it was very highly spoken of by Morton at Ule Boutique and who I bought this beer from so if you do find yourself in Copenhagen go and check out his shop some really awesome beers there and Morton's a very nice guy so he will steer you in the right direction Go and check it out. Copenhagen's beautiful as well, so you will enjoy your time there. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. The brewery websites, link to my other reviews from both the guys involved here, and all the usual social media things, Facebook, Twitter, and Untapped. Please support me on there. If you want to see more beer reviews, subscribe to the channel, and do go and check out the site for Ull Boutique and below. And to my Danish viewers, let me know some other Danish beers that you'd like me to have a look at. The standard of Danish beer is really top drawer so I will try my best to get a hold of some of those for you. So anyway, to tell you about Omegar Breukhaus first. So Omegar Breukhaus are based in Kastrup in Copenhagen in Denmark and they're probably one of the best known Danish craft breweries outside of Toyo and McKellar but these guys actually brew their stuff in Copenhagen unlike the other two who brew most of their beers actually in Belgium. But the brewery was established in 2007 by two young friends Morten Valentin Lundsback and Jakob Storm and both of them had been avid home brewers for a number of years but like many in the trade they turned professional after kind of discovering their passion if you like but apparently the pair were forced to do a chemistry and physics project together in school and so they wrote about the fermentation process in beer and they got a very good grade for it and their beer gets very good grades from me as well incidentally but after opening in April 2007 their beers quickly established themselves in Copenhagen and soon their first brew kit was actually too small so they had to upscale in 2011 and they're now based in Tornbu which is another district and it's a same district in Kastrup, near actually very close to the airport but apparently they've got quite a humorous approach to their brewing and you will see that if you read the labels on their beer and they always like to put crazy stories on their labels and this has apparently caused them problems when they try and sell their beer to Sweden to Finland Iceland and places like that where there's the nationalized beer shops apparently they don't take to it very kindly so Omegar just but Omegar don't care they just keep doing the labels and I have to admit I quite enjoy the stories for them anyway but I can smuggle these over the Orson bridge into Sweden anyway so doesn't matter I still get hold of their beer regardless of what Sisti and Bologit think and I've got good contacts in Denmark now that can sort that out for me but a very good brewery and one that you really want to check out probably one of my favourite breweries probably in the top three breweries I've discovered since I moved here to Scandinavia so anyway to tell you about Grassroots Brewing and Hill Farmstead Brewery so the Grassroots beers are brewed in Greensboro Bend in Vermont at the Hill Farmstead Brewery and this company was founded by Sean Hill back in 2010 and he'd been home brewing since he was 15 years old and he actually has history in Denmark. He brewed for a while at the Fano Breukhaus and also Noribro Breukhaus before he returned to the US to found his own brewery but since the company's inception the brewery has won several awards and the most recent of these and probably the most prestigious as well is the fact that they won the best brewery in the world of 2015 but the brewery is particularly well known for the IPA APAs and the Saison beers and Sean names most of them after his ancestors but since the beer is only distributed within the state of Vermont, very small state albeit with a very good craft beer market and a very good food market as well many pilgrims actually travel to the barn on the hill to stock up on the beer apparently there's huge big queues outside of the of the barn before it opens at midday to sell the beer so this gives you an idea of how good this brewery is but it's actually a shame that their beers are only distributed on a very small area because you know apparently they're very good if you go and look at the profile on rate beer these beers are rated 98 99 100 some very good stuff coming out of this brewery but the brewery logo actually comes from a sign that used to be in Sean's great grandfather's tavern just up the hill from the brewery although you can see it on the little on the bottle here so I will show you it in just a second but without further ado let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer so I'll just give it a quick wipe so it doesn't 
annoy the camera too much when I go to show you the artwork. But apparently, this beer was originally introduced in 2013 and it had a different name actually. And it was first brewed in Vermont when Jakob and Morton from Omegar went to visit the brewery in northern Vermont. And But this actual version that we're going to drink tonight was introduced in 2014 at the McKellar Copenhagen Beer Festival. And it's named after, it's in, the name is inspired by the travel blogs of Hans Christian Andersen, who's quite a, I think he's quite well known. He's a Danish beer and uh, sort of a kind of beer and travel blogger. Apparently these blogs are good but I don't speak Danish so I can't read them. But just to read the blurb that's on the side of this beer, it says Sean Hill, magician, eccentric, wizard and one of the modern craft beer world's most unique personalities. In every way a person as far away as imaginable from a typical Omega frat boy mentality. But in spite of this or perhaps because of this, Sean became a good friend of Omega Broikus when he himself worked as a brewer in Norriber Brewhouse, Copenhagen, years ago. And quite a few beers came to the light of day in the vaults of Omega Brewhouse as a result of his faithful collaborative friendship. So when we visited New England in the summer of 2013, it was only natural to pop by Sean's farmhouse brewery, Hill Farmstead, absolutely in the middle of nowhere. Sean gave us a hard time for finishing a couple of kegs of some rare saison during a late night drinking session, but all of that was forgotten the next morning when we brewed shadow pictures of a journey, a name inspired by H.C. Anderson's writings. A clean and almost insultingly quaffable double IPA loaded with crisp aroma hops. Shadow Pictures, which was also the name, the other name of the one was Skugebilder, and it is their very own interpretation of the beer we brewed with Sean on one summer's day in Vermont. So, so apparently you should serve it at 7 to 10 degrees, which it will be now. Tells you inside it's got Pilsner, Carahel and Munich malts in there, and it's hopped with Hercules and Tomahawk, which Hercules is a trademark of Omega Brucus, really nice aromatic flavours. Tomahawk will complement that, but there's Simcoe, Chinook, Amarillo, Centennial, Cascade, Citra, and White Sugar added to this beer as well, and it uses a US ale strain yeast, so it should be pretty awesome. Comes in at 8%, and like I said, it's a double IPA. So I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork for this one. You can see it's quite nicely presented, and it's got the typical Omega Breakhus bottle cap on this one. I actually learned when I was in Copenhagen this week that you're supposed to pronounce it Omoya or something like that. It's kind of meant to be similar to that place in Northern Ireland, Ireland that nobody can pronounce uh, Omar or something like that. Apparently it's Omar Breakhus. So apologies for the pronunciation, but I'm used to calling them Omega. I'll try and fix that for the next video though. But yes. As you can see, a really nice smoky opening on this beer as we get it out, but very much looking forward to trying this beer. It's supposed to be pretty damn awesome. Rated at 98 on rate beer, incidentally. And Morton in Old Beauty can certainly thought very highly of this beer, and he knows his stuff. So I'll just let you have a look at this as well. There you can see the two brewery symbols. There is Om Omegar, or Omar, as it's supposed to be, and there is the one for Glass Roots Brewing, and I believe that's the same symbol that they use for Hill Farms, so just a little bit different with the glass uh, grass roots sitting writing on it there as well, but a very, very nice beer, and you can smell the note, the aroma coming off this one, a very, very strong aroma, so let's have a look at it properly. But as you can see, this beer has poured a pretty clear, bright orangey amber colour. There's a frothy half finger of quite a white head there, actually. It's a little bit bumpy too. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see the beer is transparent, although there is a, a level of opaque to it as well. If I bring the light over and just let you have a proper look at the colour, you can see quite a bright looking beer. Some big bubbles stick into the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head. But overall, this looks like a very very nice beer and you can smell the big hoppy character coming out of this one so let's have a proper look at the aroma in this so as you would expect with all these american hops in this beer there's a huge fruity juicy character to this one the hops really take front seat in this beer so there's some nice grapefruit that's coming from the cascade it actually smells quite juicy i'm getting a lot of orange out of this one too which the kind of citrusy oranges are really from the amarillo hop but you can get some of the more complex tropical fruit notes too. There's definitely passion fruit in there. That's the Simcoe and a little bit of the Citra. But the more complex tropical notes come kind of mangoes and peaches. Those are all coming from the Citra hop. But there's also a big kind of underlying floral aromatic character. And when you sugar the beer up a bit more, you really start to get that out. And the floral aromatic character, as I said, the Hercules hop is a big German hop that has this huge big spicy aromatic bitterness to it. That is a trademark of Omar Brugus. And they've put the tomahawk in there as well. And I've had a few beers with tomahawk and that'll complement that to no end. Should be really nice, but there's a definite 
kind of pine resin though. You can get just this little earthy pine resin out of this beer and you'll get that from both the Chinook and the Simcoe. But underneath you can pick up a little bit of malty character. There's a little bit of caramel in there, kind of boozy caramel and also some kind of cereally biscuit character. When you sugar it up you can smell that mixing with just a little bit of the earthy pine resins in there. There is a good cereal character but it smells quite sweet at the same time. That boozy caramel character really coming out in this beer. So with a beer of this standard, especially a double IPA, do give it a good smell before you get stuck into it. I think there was eight or nine different varieties of hops in this one. So it really is worth having a proper look at the aroma before you get stuck into this beer. Very, very nice, but not the most pungent actually. It's not, the aroma in this one I would say isn't as good as the batch 1000. It's not quite as fruity in my opinion, but we'll see how we get on with the taste of the beer. That's the most important thing. So let's get stuck into this beer then. This is the Shadow Pictures of a Journey, a collaboration between the grassroots brewing brand of Hill Farmstead Brewery in Vermont and Omager, or Omeyer, and from Kastrup in Copenhagen in Denmark. Skål. Oh yeah, that is a damn awesome beer. You know, it's not rated 98 on Rate Beer for nothing. That website very rarely leads you wrong. If you find this beer, you need to try it. But before you start dissecting the flavour too much, just sugar it around your palate a bit and let everything go, everything go around your palate. So yeah, first thing you're going to notice about this beer is just how juicy it is. This is beautifully done. Yeah. There's a lot of passion fruit in this beer. You can really pick that up. That passion fruit from the from the Simcoe hop and the Citra hop is really coming out for me. That's what's the, the fruity character that is sticking out in this beer. Mm. But there's also I'm getting a good citrusy backbone to this one too. There's a nice orangey, kind of tangerine citrus coming out there. As I said, that's Amarillo hop, and you can feel that just sitting underneath these nice tropical fruits. It's a very tropical, kind of almost like a sort of tropical fruit punch or something like that. There's so much fruit character in this beer. Mm. But the floral aromatic character in this is really nice too. The tomahawk in this one, can, it complements the, the Hercules hop really quite well. The beers I've tried from these guys that have had Hercules in them, the, the winter in Bangalore I think had it, the building bridges had it, and I'm pretty sure the, the batch 1000 was the first one that I actually tried that had it. But all really damn good beers. And the tomahawk one actually, it subdues it a little bit, but it gives it a little bit more complexity. So it's quite an interesting little quirk to the beer. And you'll get the floral aromatic character in this beer around the sides of your palate. There's maybe just a little touch of earthy character in the back corners of the palate too. And you'll just feel that there's a little bit of bitter dry character from the earthiness. And then as you come further forward, it gets more floral and aromatic till you get to the front corners of the palate. And it smooths out a bit as you go round the front cor the front curve of the tongue there. It's a nice smooth grassy hop for me that comes out in the very front corner of the front curve of the tongue. And behind that you've got the big oily bubble where a lot of your fruit characters come out of this beer. As I said, a big tropical fruit bowl that comes out of this beer. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is really, really nice. A big grapefruity character coming out of this beer, like I said, but there's a lot of passion fruit in there. Some nice sort of peachy notes as well, they're just complementing it, but definitely passion fruit for me is the big element of the tropical flavour. Some peaches, some apricots, some of the, the mangoes as well, you're getting the juicy element, the more juicy elements of tropical fruit flavours in this one too. And the orange, as I say, just kind of underpins that for me. It's really, really nice. But that trademark Omega floral aromatic character from the Hercules, it actually, one thing I'm finding is that it's actually building in the taste. It's coming out a bit more as you take a few more sips of this beer. But there's one thing that you can't question about this beer is that it is beautiful. And for a double IPA, there's not a lot of alcohol warmth from this. It's frighteningly drinkable. You could session quite a few of these. It's very, 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 very nicely done and very drinkable beer. Mm. Yeah. Pine raisins are coming out a bit more as your palate adjusts to this beer as well, but they're quite subtle 
in comparison to some of the, the pine raisin flavours I've had from some of these beers before. But as I, again, as I say, I'm repeating, this is a really, really nice double IPA. You have to give this guy a go if you get it. I think it's a limited edition. So do pick it up if you find it. I don't think you'll find this one again. So if you're lucky enough to, you need to try this. But the malt base on this one's quite interesting. There's a little bit of a bready character to this one. And that just blankets the middle of the tongue. But there is an element of kind of cereal biscuity dryness. And there's a little bit of the kind of typical caramel boozy characters that you expect of a double IPA. Very, very nice beer. You, as I keep repeating it, but you have to try this one. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say mid to full bodied it's got quite a big oily mouthfeel to it the carbonation is really quite smooth but there's a huge juicy character to this beer it's got quite a kind of thick syrupy juice character to it in honesty mm. and the hoppy character is really nice too for me the hoppiness of this beer isn't quite as pronounced as it was in the batch 1000 which is quite interesting. This beer, when it's a double IPA, that's surprising as well. The batch 1000, I think, was 7% and a single IPA, and the, the big bitter character in that was a lot more pronounced for me. The, the double IPAs usually expect a little bit more hoppy bitterness and a bit more of the, the malty character, but for me, the batch 1000 was more on the hoppy side. This does have more malt character and more boozy flavours, as you would expect, and it is a very nice beer, but for me, it's interesting just because it's that bit more drinkable for a double IPA but there is a little bit of malt sweetness in the middle of the palate as I say there's a little bit of dryness comes out from the cereal characters in there as I said a biscuity kind of cereal flavour just lingers in the middle of the palate and you can feel the dryness building but around the edges of the palate you've got a nice big quite bitter floral aromatic character in there that dryness just builds as you move into the aftertaste there's a bit of pine resin and again that builds as you move into the aftertaste too it starts off very smooth in the flavour of the beer and then it builds to be really quite dry but around the front of the tongue it's quite wet and quite smooth but there's a lot of juicy character coming out of this beer too so it's got a bit of everything as i said a very very sessionable double ip probably one of the most sessionable ones i've come across and again it's a damn awesome beer as i say limited edition you have to try this beer really really have enjoyed this one whether it tops the batch 1000 i'm not quite sure the batch 1000 i have to admit it's probably the best IPA I've reviewed ever, uh, and it's closely followed by the Opigor's Lavish IPA. Those two beers are two of the best ones that I've ever reviewed on the channel. This one pushes them quite close, but for me, I'm not sure if it tops the Batch 1000, but it's another very, very good beer. And don't let the back, if you try the Batch 1000, don't be put off from trying some of the other Omega beers. They're all really damn good, but this is really really nice and for a double IPA frighteningly drinkable like I say so you do need to try this one but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review it's been really cool to do another one from our one of my favourite brew houses or breweries that I've come across since I moved to Scandinavia and of course it's been cool to get my first taste of a Hill Farmstead beer as well so another very very good review so I hope the guys at Omega actually enjoy this one they seem to really like my videos so I hope they enjoy this one too but as always if you do happen to have tried this beer please let me know in the comment section below your own thoughts on it always interesting to hear from you guys let me know where you're drinking the beer as well there will be more reviews from Omega I keep saying the name wrong now but there will be, will be more reviews reviews from Omega coming in the fairly near future so I hope you enjoy this one do subscribe to the channel and pick up those and do check up the social media things too but until the next beer review it's landed just now go and support your local craft breweries but most importantly go and check out Hill Farmstead if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity and Omega Breakus from Castrop in Copenhagen probably one of my favourite breweries in Scandinavia and probably one of my top five breweries in fact so do go and check them out it's landed just now and I'll catch you soon with more reviews and more Danish beers coming up for you Skål